Hey friends, I'm Shanil Shan. Uh, welcome to the channel and another video. Um, this time around, I'm going to be reacting to Taxi Driver, another Mar Martin Scorsese classic. It's uh, apparently one of the best films of all time. I actually haven't watched the film properly. Um, I've seen it on TV bits and pieces over the years, but I actually haven't watched the whole film. I know De Niro's in it. I know he plays a taxi driver, obviously. And I know Jodie Foster's in it, uh, playing a child prostitute. Uh, and their stories somehow um, align up or something. I'm not too sure, uh, but I'm really excited because Scorsese is an excellent director. I've seen most of his work, especially his recent last 20 or 30 years worth of work. So I'm really excited to see what he did before that. And I'm a big Robert De Niro fan as well. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, before the reaction, uh, to help support the channel, I've started a Patreon page where I'll be posting full reactions to all the movies and shows that I watch uh, a couple of days before YouTube, and I'll also be holding polls for you guys to decide what uh, what I'll react to next. So please consider being a patron, but don't feel obligated to uh, a subscription to the channel or even a like to the video goes a long way um, in the YouTube algorithms. Like. One like may reach thousands of people, and I could get thousands of views just based on one like. So um, thank you for the likes or dislikes if you didn't like the video as well. Uh, with that being said, Martin Scorsese, Robert De Niro, Jodie Foster, Dex Driver, let's go. Columbia Pictures. And this time, Robert De Niro, his name in big red fonts. I like the intro. A big yellow taxi. Taxi driver, okay. So they actually literally introduce the name by showing a taxi. Peter Boyle, I've heard that name before. And Sybil Shepherd. Okay. I think I know her from the Comedy Central roast, but I don't think I've seen her in any actual films. The music is very noir. I don't know whether it's the view of De Niro himself. So what is the point of view of Robert De Niro? So he's applying for a taxi driver position. It is a taxi depot, a taxi company. So he was applying for the job. From what I can see, he's a very lonely character and doesn't have much to do. You can see in the wide shots how um, isolated and alone he is. Each night when I return the cab to the garage, I have to clean the cum off the back seat. That sounds disgusting. Some nights I clean out the blood. So he's drinking during the day too. And he's going to show and tell X-rated films. Because he has literally nothing to do. He seems like a disturbed person already. 12 hours of work and I still can't sleep. Damn, Sybil Shepherd was beautiful back in the day. I only saw her recently in the Comedy Central roasts. She's much older now, still beautiful, but damn. Same as we mm -hmm. are the people. And you can see the example of We Are The People written right in the background. That taxi driver's been staring at us. So she notices the taxi driver staring at a long distance. So she works in the campaign office, local politician. Hey, you're blocking our doorway. You think you might want to move the cab? And he drives off. I love this noir jazz music that's playing in the background. It's very different to his other movies like Raging Bull or Goodfellas. Wait, I'm wondering whether Sybil Shepherd's character is interested in the dude or just their colleagues. While we see Travis just walk into the campaign office and walk directly to Sybil Shepherd's character. Hi, I'd like to volunteer. Would you like to come have some coffee and pie with me? That's direct. Why? She seems clearly infatuated. Even though she was creeped out a little before. But Travis did come out as a very um, open and honest guy. You want to go to a, a movie with me? Sure, you know what you remind me of? She's in. I'll tell you uh, are you Charles Palantine, the candidate? Hey, it's, yes, it, it's the candidate himself. Can I ask you something, Travis? Sure. What is the one thing about this country that bugs you the most? The president should just 
clean up this whole mess here. You should just flush it right down the fucking toilet. He has a lot of bent up anger, which he's not fully expressing. Nice talking to you, Travis. Nice talking to you, sir. You're a good man. I know you're going to win. Come on, man. Get me out of here, all right? Hey, that's Jodie Foster. She's literally a, a child. Come on, come on. So she was trying to escape from her pimp. Tabby, just forget about this. It's nothing. That's a twenty in nineteen seventy-six. That's quite a bit of money. Oh my God, that looks abusive as hell. And Travis definitely noticed that. He does seem a little inwardly disturbed to say the least. Oh, he still has a touch the 20. That means he does have a conscience. Or does he? Nah, he takes it. So the theme so far, I find is loneliness, mostly, and adjusting to a different society after coming back from war and finding a purpose, neither of which Travis has. He seems lost. Oh, there's Betsy. So they're going out for that movie they talked about. It seems like a pretty dodgy place to bring a woman. This is a dirty movie. No, no, this, this, is, the, this is a movie that uh, a lot of couples come to. All kinds of couples go here. You sure about that? Yeah. So is he trying to impress her or is he just used dirty films? Okay, she's clearly uncomfortable. She's, yeah, I, I, I would expect that. Because she seems like a classier lady. Let's go. Can I call you? You're only as healthy as you feel. I feel like this line is very important to the movie. You're only as healthy as you feel. This time he's walking in with more of a purpose and he doesn't look like he's been sleeping. Okay. Okay. He's getting come threatening. Look, no, come hell. on! You're in a hell. And you're gonna die in a hell like the rest come of them. Come on now. There's a cop across the street. You're like the rest of them. Look, that was a direct threat. Officer! No, no, don't, don't, don't. Hey, it's Corsese oh, again. The fucking meter. What are you doing? You see the light up there? The window? See the woman in the window? Is that J.D. Foster's character? Do you see the woman in the window? Yeah. So I want you to see that woman because that's my wife. But that's not my apartment. Oh, okay. There's nothing else. I just, I'm going to kill her. So he's trying to justify his what actions. What do you think of that? Because his wife is cheating on him. I said, what do you think of that? With who he considers as a degenerate. And that ends everything. I'd be broke tonight, I Oh, it's that 20. It still disturbs him. Even though he seems he seems clearly disturbed about that $20 bribe, pretty much, he took. Oh, there she is. Again. And this time she's being escorted by a woman. I'm guessing another prostitute. And I think Jodie Foster's character does recognize Travis a little bit because she keeps looking back. Okay, so they're picking up men obviously which triggers Travis oh I'm guessing he's getting a gun now isn't he unregistered weapons Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum that is one dangerous weapon it can sh literally shoot through walls so he bought like four weapons oh those are his scars from his military service so he's practicing shooting with all his weapons so he's subconsciously getting prepared to become very violent. I do kind of recognize this scene. Well, at least the image of the scene, not the scene itself. Holy crap. So he's gonna have at least three weapons on him for whatever he's planning to do. I honestly thought uh, Jodie Foster's character would have a larger role in the film. Is he making one of those um, hand extended? So He's trying to notice the security of the Secret Service people, but he's not being very inconspicuous about it. Is it hard to get to be in the Secret Service? Hey, look, uh, if you're really interested, if you give me your name and address, we'll send you all the information on how to apply. How's that? Crinkle, K-R-I-N-K-L-E. That's a fake name. Be careful today. Right, we'll do. You have to be careful. So that's, the Secret Service is very suspicious of him already. And I don't think he was armed this time. He was just scouting out the place. 
but they don't have any legitimate information on him. He's trying to build his confidence. I'm trying you. You talking to me? So, so does he want a conversation with the person he's trying to kill? You talking to ah, me? Ah, there it is. You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, yeah? Huh? <laughs> okay. Clearly disturbed man with no human connections at all. Okay, shut your fucking mouth and give me the cash out the drawer. Come on. Uh, Come on. Let's go. Let's okay, go. Man, it's it's getting getting wrong. Wrong. I'm getting it, man. Stop taking so long. Come on. Hey, reach in your sock, you got more bread. That's it, man. Give me the rest hey. of the fucking bread. Hey. He literally shot him. He's dead. Holy shit. shit man. So his first act of violence. Shit. Oh my god. That's disturbing. And he's killed for the first time in America, for assuming. That was crazy. That whole scene was crazy. And I like how Martin Scorsese just transitions from extreme violence to upbeat music. He's he's losing it. He's clearly losing it. You can see it in his face. This is great acting. I love him. He doesn't care. He will, he probably wasn't even listening to what they were saying. It's almost like his mind is consumed by anger and loneliness and hatred and despair. This film so far has been a character study of an unstable person from what I've seen so far again. Yeah. Right. You go talk to him. His name is Matthew. I'll be over there waiting for you. Your name Matthew? That's the pimp. Hey, that's Harvey Keitel, man. Look at him. He's young. I and swear ripped. I'm clean. I'm just waiting here for a friend. He's gonna bust me for nothing, man. I'm not a cop. No, I'll take it. Hey, man. Take out no money over here. You wanna fuck me? You ain't gonna fuck me. You're gonna fuck her. You give her the money. Yeah. I like the handheld. They, they didn't have Steadicam back then. I don't, I don't think they used it till Goodfellas. So it's all handheld. Roll, gosh, all these movement bucks. shots, probably. And he has to pay an additional $10 for the room. Come on. Well, I, I guess he, has, he hasn't done this before. And I don't think he himself has any idea what he's... Really oh, what's your real name? Iris. Iris. Well, what's wrong with that? That's a nice name. <laughs> That's what you think. Does he stop her? No, don't do that. There you go. Don't do that. Don't you remember me? But you're the one that came into my cab. You're the one that wanted to get out of here. Because when I'm not stoned, I have no place else to go. Oh, my God. So they just... Travis uh, totally relates to that. Protect me from myself. Okay, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. So they'll meet again at 1 a.m. See you tomorrow. This is yours. And right. So he did consider it as dirty money. I am a man. <laughs> God. I don't know who's weirder, you or me. <laughs> he can finally, he has a, he has a con connection to another human being again. So he has two purposes in life. To help Iris and to kill the senator. But he wants to make sure Iris is safe first. Throughout all this, I have to say Jodie Foster has been doing a great job. I don't know how old she was when she shot the movie, but she's playing somebody who's under 16 very, very convincingly and very well. I can see why her career just skyrocketed after this role, even though she has such a small part in the movie. So he's polishing his shoes, getting ready for his big finale. He's finally burning the flowers he gave to Betsy. This also shows the passage of time and it shows that it hasn't been more than, what, a month or less he gave the flowers. So all this 
all this has been happening in like a month and a half or something. It's 300, 400, 500 dollars. So he's leaving that money for Iris before. And oh, that's a mohawk. So he sh shaved off most of his hair for this. I like the framing of the senator and the sarcastic clapping by Travis. And I think the Secret Service agent is scanning for, not him specifically, but he's definitely alert. He, he's wearing the same jacket. He's got his gun out. Oh, he's been spotted now, he's running away, okay. So he missed his opportunity and he's back in his room. I really thought it would, it would go down. Or at least he would have done something, but no. Either he was too spooked or he just got spotted. Either way, he's getting drunk and it's becoming dangerous. So he's back to driving a taxi at night and he's not stopping for passengers. How's Iris? You know Iris? Iris. No, you know, I don't know Iris. nobody named Iris. Plausible deniability. Iris. Fuck out of here, man. Get out of here. Suck on this. Oh! oh. He did let his anger out. I have no words right now. I'm just gonna watch for a couple of seconds. Hey! Oh! His arm blew off. Okay, now he's dead. Oh! He's That was the hidden weapon, and that dude is dead. Travis is shot twice. One in the neck, once in the neck, once in the arm. Oh, the knife just went through his hand. No, I need it. Oh, what a scene. And he used his last bullet. But it looks like Travis can finally rest easy. And we have a cop. What is he gonna do? Look at that smile, look at that acting, that framing, the lighting, the cinematography, the music, and the symbolism of finally fulfilling his purpose, whatever that purpose, deluded purpose he thought he had, they're all dead. And it's almost like we're frozen in time. This must have taken a quite a few takes shoot he seems like he's done done with everything what a beautiful outro taxi driver battles gangsters dear mr bickle i can't say how happy mrs steensma and i were to hear that you are well and recuperating we tried to visit you at the hospital when we were in new york to pick up iris but you were still in a coma that's there Iris is no spirits. way we can repay you for returning our Iris to us. We thought we had lost her, and now our lives are full again. S Needless to say, you are something of a hero around this household. I'm sure so you want to know about <laughs> Iris. She's back in school and working hard. The transition has been very hard for her. As you can well imagine, he's been considered a we hero. We have taken steps to see she has never caused to run away again. In conclusion, and he's Mrs. Steensma and I would like to again thank you from the bottom of our hearts. 
I did not expect this at all. We cannot afford to come to New York again to thank you in person, or we surely would. But if you should ever come to Pittsburgh, you would find yourself a most welcome guest in our home. Our deepest thanks, Bert and Ivy Steensma. Wow. So he's, he's being considered a hero. He could have been exactly the opposite. And he's back to being a taxi driver. I was pretty sure he, he, he died. But he's, he's got a scar. Now she seems interested or what? He clearly still is a disturbed person. That hasn't changed about him. We have to remember, he just killed four people in this movie, if I recall correctly. How much was it? He's not gonna take money from her. But he does feel good about himself. I really did not expect him to be alive at the end of the movie. Wow. And the movie ends just like it began. But this time around, it's not raining anymore and his vision is not blurred. You can, you can clearly see he's noticing more than just the people around. So by being a bad person in his head, he accidentally became a better person. There are a lot of themes in this movie. This is a movie I'll be thinking of for a long time. And I love how the credits aren't just credits. They, they, um, they're part of the film itself. If the music at the beginning was um, very upbeat and very blues and very um, noir, this is more of a conclusion of the same type of music. So it, it's almost like a bookend to the whole movie. And the final shot, cars being driven away. I loved it. I loved it. So I took a couple of minutes to think about the film and uh, there's quite a bit to talk about themes of the movie because there are quite a few themes that uh, Martin Scorsese deals with in this film, like isolation and um, how basically dissatisfaction can lead you to do a lot of crazy things. And um, there's definitely a lot about violence and judgment and how to act on your feelings and stuff. The first thing I've noticed definitely is uh, Travis's isolation and um, whether or not it's a common thing people go through. It probably is, especially people who go through war and come back. The whole process of how Travis ends up in a situation like this um, is a very good question and um, that's something to be considered. Um, Travis doesn't usually form human connections in, in, in the entire film. We've only seen him with um, two actual characters, both of them women, um, one of them a girl, um, Betsy and Iris. So he's only himself, or he's trying to be the best version of himself when he's actually interacting with these females. Um, he has violent tendencies, and I think he's always had these violent ten tendencies in him for the longest time. Uh, but he didn't ever act on them. So there's a big question about um, whether thinking of something and actually doing it, the intent of doing it, are the same thing or not, whether uh, thought is a crime or not itself, and uh, is violence ever the answer? In this case, I guess he did end up being the hero of the film, even though he killed so many people. I don't know, as a member of the audience, should I feel good or bad about that? And I like how Martin Scorsese is making me think and uh, question what I feel about this whole scenario. I also really like the part about um, how Travis finds everything and every everyone around him pretty disgusting. And he thinks of himself as a better person, even though he's part of the same crowd or the same society. And um, he doesn't feel like he's worthy of a civilized society. I, I'm still not 100% sure of why he wanted to kill um, the senator, but I think he wanted to do an act or do something big or make an impact in, 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 in some way. And his disillusioned mind somehow convinced him to go for it and kill him, I'm guessing. So there's a lot to think about judgment and um, there's also a lot to think about how women in general are treated in this film. Um, I don't think there are any standout female characters apart from 
um, Iris, and what we have to question why um, Travis, from starting, he changes his perspective on females, because when he was with Betsy, he was clearly trying to impress her, and when he was interacting with Iris, he was clearly trying to help her. So that that tells a lot of um, of of Travis's character and um, Harvey Keitel's character was very interesting as well. Um, this type of violence is perpetuated even today. There are pimps and um, prostitutes all all over all over the world, and the question is whether there's a place for these type of people in society. I clearly don't think so, but I might be wrong here. Um, the music itself was brilliant from beginning to end. The cinematography, I had nothing to complain about. The lighting. Um, the acting. Um, this is something I take for granted when I go see a Martin Scorsese film. Um, these, all of these are top notch. We're not. We're beyond that. We're 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 trying to understand what he's trying to convey to us as the audience about life and about dissatisfaction and about loneliness and isolation and anger and how to process it and how to let your anger out in a positive way even though we saw Travis's character kill a bunch of people he still technically is the hero at the end so there's a lot to think about there overall i really enjoyed this film uh i would rate this a little higher than raging bull which i watched last week i think or eight or ten days ago and um there's just a lot of soul searching in this film at least from what i could find De Niro, as usual, was brilliant. Holy crap. This is why he's regarded as one of the best actors of all time, because he can do that. He can he can go into, just like Daniel Day-Lewis or, or Al Pacino uh, in his earlier work, he can he can go into a role where I don't see him as Robert De Niro until I um, get introduced to the name of the character, and then it's 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 the character. It's, it's not De Niro anymore. And um, I would highly recommend anybody who hasn't seen this movie to go watch the movie. I'm sure you have seen it because you wouldn't have seen, watched a reaction video of the film without actually watching it. And um, so, yeah, Taxi Driver. It was an excellent, excellent film. Uh, please do consider uh, liking this video, uh, subscribing to the channel. It helps me grow. A like goes a long way. I do have a Patreon page. Don't be obligated to be a patron. But if you do, you'll get full done reactions to all, um, everything I do pretty much a couple of days before YouTube. Uh, there'll be polls in which we'll set up what we'll watch next together. And I'm very excited because I have watched a lot, uh, quite a bit, but I still haven't watched so many stuff. Even recently, my brother did point out that I didn't watch a lot of stuff in the last 10 or 15 years, which I should have, especially TV shows, which I want to get into. Um, so please leave your uh, suggestions or anything I can do differently, or the lighting, or since I'm just starting out a YouTube channel, so any suggestion would help. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Can't wait. Bye.